Good morning, everyone. I pray today that you are blessed and that you recall and know everything that the Savior has done for you. We've been looking at the hymns of Easter because four days ago we celebrated the wonderful event, the greatest event that God could give us through the birth of his Son, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But there's some things that we do as we get to the resurrection that we cannot forget what it cost Jesus to get to the resurrection. Remember, Good Friday we mourn because Jesus had died. Sunday morning we rejoice because he is resurrected and with him all power and authority has been given to him. With him comes grace, peace, and mercy. With him comes forgiveness. But we also must not forget the cost of what Jesus paid to get us to the resurrection, to get us to the life that we have now. We've been looking at the Tims of Easter, and today we're going to do another one, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Now, we have to understand that this, as we look at this psalm, we're going to remember what Jesus has done. But as we get there, I want to tell you a bit, little bit about another church rebel. This rebel is Isaac Watts. He's a rebel, rebel, if you will, in the Church of England because of the way that they were singing. The hymns were slow and ponderous. And then he said, no, we need to bring life here. And so his father challenged him to write a hymn. So he started writing hymns. And so we're the beneficiaries of that challenge that his father gave and also his mother gave him. But the, the hymns that we remember most from him are those that seem to be his personal testimony. And so as we look today at the wondrous cross, we're actually looking a bit at Isaac Watts' personal testimony. Because as we look at the words that he has written, we have to ponder them in our own hearts as well. What has God done for me? What is my response to what he has done? Here's the first verse. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count as loss and pour contempt on all my pride. Understand, when we look at the cross, we have to remember the suffering of Jesus. We have to remember the crown of thorns on his head. We have to remember the piercing of the side, the piercing in his wrist, the piercings in his feet. You have to remember the blood that flows from us, for us, because, as he puts it, the Prince of Glory, God himself, is strapped to that cross for each of us. So what's our response to that? He says, I pour contempt on all my pride. I humble myself before what God has done before me. My richest gains I count as loss because none of them compare to the gift of life that has been given to me because of what God is doing hanging on the cross for me. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, I remember, I remember. There's much to be said for us as Protestants and Catholics. After all, we're brothers and sisters. But often I look at a, a Protestant cross and it is vacant. And that is true because Jesus no longer hangs there on that cross. But then when I look at my brothers and sisters of the Catholic faith, I see Jesus still hanging there because that is a reminder that that is the instrument in which the Prince of Glory died for you and for me. I remember because I have a visual image of Jesus hanging on the cross, suffering for me. One of the most beautiful I've seen is in Germany, a Lutheran church. A single block of granite on the order of the Pieta, or David, if you will. Jesus is hanging on this enormous cross 
with the look of agony yet the look of peace on his face because that's there for you and I when I survey the wondrous cross. Isaac goes on, Forget, forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, except in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them through his blood. Forbid it that I should boast, that my life should be about me and not about the kingdom, not about what Jesus has done. Because he is indeed the Messiah. Yes, Christ. He is indeed God. But those things that charm me, those things that call to me, those things that we hide inside of us, those things that allure us, those things that call our name, those things that entice us, I surrender them. I sacrifice them to your blood. Why? Because I want your blood to cover me in every aspect of my life. I want your blood to be in every crevice of my being. That's a lot of surrender. That's a lot of praying. But it is a seriousness of what God wants to do in our lives because indeed, as we pour contempt on our shame, as we give these things to him, he covers them with his blood. That when the enemy tries to entice us, we're able to say no because of the blood of Jesus, because the curse of sin for us has been broken because of the blood of Jesus. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did ever such love and sorrow meet or thorns compose such a crown? Bear that image in your mind today. Yes. From his head, from his hands, from his feet, flow blood. Blood that mingles down for you and me. Yet, there's his love there. Yet, there's sorrow there. His love for us in every drop of blood that has been shed. From his body being broken Thursday night into Friday morning the beatings, the scourgings, to what is happening here on the cross. We showed the movie the Passion of the Christ a few weeks ago. I like that movie. Not because Jim Caviezel is, does such a great job as Jesus, no, but it reminds me again of Jesus' suffering for me. The sorrow that is there, <clears throat> the suffering that are going on, yet we see the love of Christ enduring the pain because he loves us. Sorrow, love mingled together for us because we cannot forget what the resurrection cost Jesus. All of that because of his love for us. Love mingled with sorrow, suffering for you and me. Brother Watts finishes this up this way. Were the whole realm of nature mine, that would be a present far too small. Love amazing, so divine, demands my soul, demands my all. Are you shortcutting Jesus? I do. And I have to go before him and ask for forgiveness. I have to go before him and confess. Because when we remember what has happened on the cross, when we live in the reality of what has happened on the cross, when we live in the power and the assurance of the resurrection, it demands our all. It demands every iota of our being. Yes? If all creation were ours to give, it would still be a present far too small because of what Jesus has done in our lives, for our lives, and continues to do in and for our lives. Remember the cross as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ.
Lord God, we bless you again and thank you for the wonderful gift that you've given us in your son, Jesus. Lord, we bless you and praise you. Help us to always remember what it cost Jesus to get to the resurrection. We thank you for his resurrection. In your name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Be blessed today, dear friends.